welcome back we're doing our first official q a my name is natia but some people call me garden queen some people call me queen and that's in real life i garden in a usda zone 6b and i live in the st louis region i posted a video about two weeks ago and the video was peach begonias and boxwood topiary summer window boxes and i asked for questions and you all delivered beyond my expectations i am so excited thank you for the participation first question you have another job besides youtube love your garden and pots so beautiful yes i do next question how do you figure out what colors and plants and containers you would do for each season that is actually a great question so every year in my garden i sit down and i like to plan out what i'm going to do as far as bulbs color scheme what plants, what annuals, what containers I'm pulling in, what containers I'm pulling out. And I do that every year and I actually already have everything planned out for my 2024 season in my garden. Next question, can you do a video of your entire garden? Absolutely will, we're gonna do that this year. Hey queen, love your channel. What do you do for pests in the garden and do you deal with powdery mildew? So for pests in the garden, it just kind of depends on what I'm dealing with. I'm gonna chop that up into two folds. So for things that are more prone to powdery mildew such as perennials, try not to utilize them in my garden. And then because I'm in the St. Louis region, we're humid here, so it makes us more prone to powdery mildew. So what I like to do in those scenarios is I like to try to give those perennials room to breathe. And then for my annuals, like things such as like zinnias, which are prone to powdery mildew, what I do is I just succession plant them. And then so if I notice that I have a crop or a plant, a planting that's getting powdery mildew, I'll go ahead and I'll pull them out. The next question is from Amanda Sides. Where do you winter over all your plants you pull and save? Sometimes I feel like I need just four room, four greenhouses. So I don't have a formal greenhouse. So some of the things that I pull out, I will store inside of my sunroom makeshift greenhouse. And that's typically, I'll bring things in if I know I'm getting a freeze. Other than that, I keep them up under grow lights and I switch them in and out because we do do a lot of plantings. Continue to garden throughout the winter time. And so I just bring things in, bring things out, put things in, force things in hibernation, bring things out of hibernation. So it's just something that I like to do. I would like to have a lot more space so I could, honey, if I had the space, the things I would be bringing in and just overwintering would be absolute, it would be tremendous. It would be a lot of things. She says, I feel like every gardener on YouTube is promoting proven winners. Will you be promoting them as well if given a chance? I've never been approached by proven winners to promote any of their plants. I guess it would just all depend on if I was given the opportunity, which I haven't been given that. Two, it just all kind of depends because, and let's just say allegedly. <laughs> so it just kind of seems like with proven winners, they kind of have their people that they promote plants with. It's like they already have that figured out. So if you look at like Garden Answer, she would kind of represent the home gardener, if you will. So they have one person to represent them on that front, but then they also send plants and things, which it seems like from year to year, it kind of changes versus who's trending, um, who's getting the most views, who the YouTube or Instagram or TikTok algorithm is promoting. And so it kind of feels like they kind of just shift, you know, based off the home gardener. Whoever's on trend, that may be who they're sending plants to. And this is all allegedly. Jack Barnwell would represent more of the landscaper. <laughs> I don't think I should get into that, do you? Do you prefer a small garden where you're more hands-on or a huge garden that requires higher help to keep it maintained? Me, if I had my choice, baby, I would have a park. Do you hear me? I would have acres on acres on acres. But I also enjoy a small garden because it forces you to be creative with your space. Q. 
Can you share behind the scenes of how you film your videos? They are so well done. Woo, honey. I, you know what? I do kind of go behind the scenes sometimes, but that's more on my Instagram page at the underscore garden queen. So I post a lot of that in my stories and kind of just show like how things are done when we're getting ready to you know, start different videos and stuff like that. So I do share a lot of that over on my Instagram page. So if you're not following me at the underscore garden queen, go ahead and give us a follow. Next question is from Elizabeth Telfer and she asks, are you in the medical field? And then she asks, why don't you plant in the ground? I do plant in the ground. It's just I have a lot of containers and I focus on a lot on container gardening. Our next question is what is the one plant you would love to have in your garden but shy away from because it will be a struggle in your zone? I don't have one. I'm thinking. No, I don't have one. What is your favorite thing about your gardening style? containers that should be like a no-brainer like i love containers okay our next question is how do you deal with thrips and other pests diatomaceous earth spray give us the tea girl i guess it will all depend on what type of plant i was using so for some things like bulbs you can kind of dust them with a pesticide and then i would probably just spray it just all depends on where I'm dealing with the issue, what type of plant it is, how much of my show is invested. More than likely, I probably would just go ahead and just pull. Walk through from front to back, so I'm guessing they want a garden tour. I was also going to ask that. I love a garden tour. We got you. You have so many plants. Where do you put them all? In my garden during the off season, I store them away. So it just all depends on what it is so like certain things need a cool a chill period so i store them so they can get the proper chill period if it's something that cannot take the cold then i'll, I'll provide them with shelter so our next question so i'm loving do you guys hear me i am loving these multi questions whatever happened with the community garden child let me get y'all the backstory on this one of my neighbors came up with this brilliant plan to do a community garden. First of all, and let's, let's start with this. There is no place for a community garden to go. There is no common area where I live at, right? Either somebody is going to donate a piece of their property for this community garden, and then I can't donate plants because I put out content here and then I also put out content on Instagram, right? So in order to be able to put out content, I got to focus my budget elsewhere. So I thought that was not going to happen. The whole thing just kind of fell apart because it was a non-starter from the beginning. You see what I'm saying? Like it's no communal property in the subdivision. And not only that, like I live in a working neighborhood. We do have a lot of retirees. So I, I take that back. Let me back step on that. We do have a lot of retirees, but the people who would more than likely be out there doing a lot of the work, like everybody works full time and I work full time. And then in addition to working full time, I have a lot of travel with my full time work. I, sometimes I have to go out of state for conferences and things like that. And then I do YouTube, which is two full-time jobs. Your husband slash boys help you in the garden with big tasks. Absolutely. Did you put a pen in the house hunt? Nope. We're still looking. How do you just know what flowers will look good together? This is my biggest issue, Tia. So I guess for me, since I've been arranging for so long, you kind of just know and I think maybe that's a video all in its own so you kind of just know like as you start working with container arrangements and just arranging things you'll be able to kind of just know like and be able to plan so like I was saying I have my garden already planned out for 2024 so you'll be able to kind of know like what goes together and things of that nature but we will do a video on that our next question third one is the perfect round love them the begonias 
eight absolutely beautiful and how you arrange them is just gorgeous you're the queen of all queens i have learned so much from you thank you the next question comes from lisa hello natia i absolutely love your garden style and your upbeat personality thank you <laughs> i know you said you are zone 6b I was wondering how long your growing season is and I'm zone 6A with a pretty short season and can't quite grow things as quickly slash well. In the St. Louis region, I kind of feel like we kind of teeter on more of the 7B side, 7A rather than 6B. And the reason why I'm saying that is because Earlier in the year, I did a video where I planted out some daffodils in my front garden space where I was using those daffodils as like a transitional color. Planted the bulbs up, let them come up, and I already had them outside kind of just getting acclimated to the weather. For me, I take full advantage of, you know, those fall springs, those fall summers, and when we have a little bit of warmness in our weather. Season here, I feel like sometimes it's like late February, mid-February sometimes, and then it just goes on sometimes even in January because I've had in the earlier videos, I showed you guys where I was pulling containers that were in full-on bloom. I pl planted up some Monrovia osteospermins and I pulled them in January, baby. And I had some lemon coral sedum, baby. It was in absolute, they were luxurious. So it just all kind of depends. And I do have times where I get caught in the moment where I'm like trying to push it. And then the one day we're looking good, like last year, all of, I mean, it was, everything was fine. It was luxurious. We had a beautiful show and honey, I was on the highway coming back from Chicago, headed down to the St. Louis region. And I was like, okay, I know I'm not losing it. And it was snow flurries. By the time I made it back to St. Louis, honey, my fountain was frozen. It was still running, but it was frozen. So we kind of have, we have a nice growing season, but it's not as long as I would love it to be. Martha Stevenson, she has multiple questions inside of her comment. We're going to break them up. So she says, garden answer follows you. Are you aware of that? Girl, who are you catfishing? This lady ain't following me. Cause I think this, I think Garden Answer has over 1 million followers. Actually, let's go ahead and let's check and see. Let's go incognito. So we'll go to youtube.com. Okay. Let's put in Garden Answer. Let's go to her page has 1.77 million subscribers and 2k videos that is impressive that is very impressive let's go to her channels and see if we can see who she follows because some some channels will show who they're following or subscribed to and some will not okay we are on her subscriptions let's go to all subscriptions okay let's scroll down I don't see me nah that lady is not following my page see and I kind of knew I'm like who is catfishing me she is following my page Maybe that's another. Let's click on Team Garden Queen. Okay. Well, all right. Well, thank you for the support. That's what's up. And actually, I'm excited for anybody that follows me because, honey, it could be a struggle sometime in these YouTube streets to get subscribers. So I am so excited about that. And since we're on the subject, Last year, no, it had to be in 2021. So 2020, no, last year I was at work and I got a notification, right? 
and I didn't check the notification. I actually got the notification the day before, but I didn't check it because I was busy. I was in and out of town and everything. And so I got into work and I ended up pulling up my notifications and I'm just going through, I'm looking, and this was before you could buy the blue checks on Instagram. Honey, when I tell you, and I'm talking about A-list Hollywood celebrity, and I'm saying this from the most humblest place, I got a message from them and it was like, you got a message from, so I said, honey, who is this trying to catfish me? So I click on the message and go to the page, the person's page, right? And I said, oh my God, it is them. And I asked, I said, hey, I'm just not seeing this notification, just checking to see like what this message was about. I'm so sorry I missed it. So I'm like, honey, I ain't gonna never see what that, what the story was about. Cause actually what happened, they mentioned me in their story and you know, Instagram stories only stay on the person's profile for 24 hours. So, they responded back and just told me that they just was giving me encouraging words and just telling me to continue on my journey on YouTube and Instagram and was telling me that they love my content. And when I tell you that was the most humbling experience because it's one thing to grow a platform on YouTube and trust me, it is not easy. By no means is it easy to grow a platform on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok, you know, but that was just such a humbling experience because here it is, you know, we have an A-list Hollywood celebrity and we're not just talking about the United States, we're talking about an international celebrity and I was so humble and it really gave me just such encouragement to continue what I was doing and it let me know that I was on the right path. So. I'm just humble and grateful for anybody who takes time out of their day to spend time with me and my garden and my shenanigans, honey, because y'all know I love to cut up. So next question, that's exciting. So thank you for that. Um, how do you deal with copycats stealing your content? I don't, I mean, if you think about it, to me, that question is geared more towards the content creator. So, I mean, if a content creator comes and they take my content and they don't give me a shout out or don't say, you know, who inspired them, I can just say one thing about that. Have you thought about asking Garden Answer for a shout out? No, I have not. Actually, I know there was a lot of recommendations um, late winter, early spring to submit some photos of my garden or video of my garden because I know um, you guys, several of you guys have sent me the link to my Instagram and you all were saying that she was asking for uh, pictures. Just, I thought about it, but I just didn't do it because I felt like it was more so for her audience versus content creators. What made you start a YouTube channel? What made me start a YouTube channel is from the very beginning, I've always been encouraged to um, start a YouTube channel, especially when YouTube was just really getting big and just Vine and everything like that. So I didn't get on the Vine wagon, but I was encouraged to start a YouTube channel. So it was already something that I was doing behind the scenes. If I would be working in my garden, I would kind of just, you know, put a camera on and just kind of show what I was doing and share with my family, my friends and my colleagues. And then sometimes if I was doing something in my garden, I would even send like little clips and stuff, you know, via email or via text message to family and friends. And everyone was just saying, hey, you need to start a YouTube channel. And so I kind of thought about it because I was very big on showing people how to save money in their garden. And then about 2015, 2016, I started really thinking about starting a YouTube channel and I went ahead and just went full fledged with it in 2019. Next question, where did you learn your garden knowledge? Is it self-taught or do you have a educational background in gardening? So I grew up gardening, but I'll tell you guys, when I was younger, I always have had a big personality, but I was over one of my family members' house. You know how you spend like maybe a week or two over a family member's house. So I went over one of my family members' house and they had their annual sitting right there. Came in from the store and they sat them there. So the next day go by, annual still there. 
The next day go by and you are still there. The next day I woke up, I got outside early in the morning, arranged the annuals how I wanted them to be planted and slayed. And from there on, it was kind of like a request. Hey, what are you doing for today? Can you come over? Can you plant up my garden? But I really enjoyed it. And then I started requesting like, uh, I'm going to need a little bit of change because your garden is gardening right now. It's looking very good. So that's really how I started really getting into container design and things like that. And then, of course, as I got older and I got my own apartments and my own houses and things like that, that's when I really just dove like head in. You don't want to come over? Uh-uh, no. Nah. I don't want to come over here and plant your garden up. You need to give me $5 to 50 something, $10 something. <laughs> 